Police in Albuquerque, New Mexico, have detained and charged a man with murdering two Muslim men. The victims were among the four Muslim men killed in the city since November. Authorities believe the suspect could eventually be charged in the two other murders. CBS News correspondent Omar Villafranca has been following this story and joins us now from Albuquerque. Omar, what do we know about the suspect? Uh, at this point, we know that uh, Mohammed Syed, 51 years old, he's being charged in connection uh, with two of those murders. Uh, we understand from uh, sources in the uh, Muslim community here, uh, he does have a family. Uh, so we're trying to learn a little bit more about that, a little bit more about his past. We understand he is an, uh, he is an Afghan, uh, but how he's fit into this community here, keep in mind this is a small Muslim community here in Albuquerque. The estimates are between three and 5,000. Um, we're trying to find out more about how much people knew about him. Interesting note, though, during the press conference with the Albuquerque police, they were telling us that they received hundreds of tips from the Muslim community after they put an anonymous tip line out, and that helped lead to an arrest. Well, the apparent targeting of four Muslim men, Omar, raised questions about a, a possible serial killer, about hate crimes, but the suspect in this case appears to have actually known his victims. How does that change that, that narrative, and what is the latest with the investigation? Well, and the fact that it was somebody from the Muslim community, uh, we've talked to leaders here, and it's shocking and, and disappointing, and they're saddened here. Um, because no matter what, there were members of this small community who were being attacked. I mean, we heard of students here at the University of New Mexico, which is a great research university uh, here in Albuquerque. Um, and we heard members of the Muslim community here, they were so scared that they were leaving. They had left this area until an arrest was made. They were fearing for their life. And that has a ripple effect in the community. Uh, actually, the mosque president was telling us that he was telling uh, the faithful that if they did not feel safe leaving their homes, they could pray at home, and they were setting up meal delivery ser services. Uh, in the community, it's common for, uh, you know, to come right. and get meals together. They were setting up meal uh, meal services. So that shows you the extent that people were scared. Now they find out that it could be somebody uh, from their own community. They're shocked. They're saddened. They're trying to figure out exactly what happened. Now, we understand that there was some, in the quoting police here, an interpersonal relationship. That's not telling us much about how intimately he knew uh, the victims or why they were targeted in the first place. There's plenty of rumor. There's plenty of speculation. As a matter of fact, CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations, has released a statement saying uh, that they don't want to stand with any of this uh, anti-Shia hate that's going on right now. There's going to be a lot of layers to peel back in this. And mind you, this is just two of the four. Police told us that they are, um, when they went into his home, uh, they found a gun. They were able to trace the casings back to two separate crime scenes. Uh, Mr. Syed was actually pulled over in Santa Rosa, New Mexico, 115 miles away, an hour plus. They were following him and got state troopers to pull him over, and they found more weapons in that vehicle. So, of course, they got to run tests on that and see where those weapons, if they were used in any of the other crimes. So, at this point, a lot of police work still has to be done. People are breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief that the suspect uh, is in custody. But, you know, his first court date, we're still waiting to find out. All right, Omar, thank you. Thank you.